Hi guys, welcome to our channel. Today I'm here with a very special guest of mine. <laughs> <laughs> special <laughs> indeed. I'm here with my boss. I will first of all, before we go into the topic for today, I will give a brief intro. Okay. Of how you will know this person is very special. <laughs> <laughs> and for me to convince her, it took me oh a while to convince her to do this with me. <laughs> While we were in Nigeria, we were working in the financial sector and she was the assistant branch manager. So she was my boss. <laughs> but then I was just a teller at the bank and after that when we relocated to the UK we happened to live in the same city so we kept in touch and today I was able to convince her to do this content with me and while she was in Nigeria she was a very career oriented person she was very hard working and she was focused on her career I'm blushing <laughs> <laughs> now so she was always someone I admire and I admire her achievement Thank to you. that stage while we were in Nigeria. So coming here, I realized that she's still someone that is very enthusiastic about her career. She's still focused on building her career. Even when she's here, she's married and she started out. So that brings us to the topic that we're discussing today, which is how to not lose your sense of individuality or your sense of identity after marriage because we notice that a lot of women women especially they tend to lose their sense of identity after marriage if you think back to some of your childhood friends you realize that there are some friends that were very enthusiastic about their career they were very career oriented they always have big dreams and aspirations they were yeah. very ambitious mm -hmm. and after a while once they get married they start their family they tend to feel like they forget their sense of identity they forget all their career aspirations all their goals they just feel like marriage seems to be an achievement for them and the end for of real. the road for them which is really sad because these people they were very bright people that are very industrious and hardworking. which if they pursue their career even while married they would achieve a lot and there's always good when two people are achieving things in a relationship rather mm -hmm. than when only just one, one person yes, yes. so it tends to reduce the achievement you achieve together so that brings us to the topic today Zainab is here and she will be sharing some of the tips on how she maintained pursuing her career even with the huge achievement of getting married and also starting her family I'll let her do the talking <laughs> thank you so much Zinto. please with your boss <laughs> <laughs> she was my boss so. <laughs> don't mind now Zinto was my madam Zinto was my <laughs> oh my god, I'm <laughs> Oh, that's like an inside joke, really. <laughs> How to maintain your individual self, your identity while being married? A lot of ladies, like when they get married, they feel like, yeah, that's like their greatest achievement. Mm. Yes, it is. It is an achievement to get married, it is a very big achievement. But then, after being married you need to also have your individual self so for example i used to make a mistake well when i was still dating like once i'm in a relationship i tend to just forget about myself and that's it but then when i got married thankfully i got married to a very supportive person mm -hmm. who supports me in whatever i want to whatever steps i want to make it even encourages me so i feel like as ladies we should always try to also to still maintain the things we used to do so for example when you were single you used to like to sew or bake or you know things like that even after getting married and even having your family i feel like you should still maintain such hobbies first thing is to still maintain your hobbies don't let go of your hobbies and things that make you happy before you got married another thing is having a journal yeah it's very important do you have a journal no <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest having a journal for us. So I have a journal where I jot down things. I jot, I write a lot. I write things about XX year. I want to achieve XX thing in 2025. I want to achieve, you know. Wow, so, really? Yes, yes. So while, even if I forget such a goal or whatever I want to do, and I'm going through my journal. Oh, 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 yeah. I wrote down this on so so days. I want so I will start working towards achieving the goal. Do you okay. understand? So I feel like having a journal should 
also come into play which is what i do i have a journal where i jot down things it doesn't even have to be every day it's maybe when you remember something just write it down you can even have it on your notes because every everyone is digital right now yeah. the world has gone digital you don't need a biro and a paper it's on your notes i have a part in my um phone where i have notes oh this is what i want to achieve this year this is what i want to achieve this month do you understand oh i want to i want to get my um driver's license this month i want to get my i want to get a certification this month while i'm writing it i'm reminding myself about such goal that i want to achieve later that month or that year and reflecting on those goals because you already have it written down i like the point of journal and i would it's something i would consider mm -hmm. because sometimes you can have this thought in your mind and over time you tend to forget because you get busy yes. with family with a lot of activities yes but when you keep that journal and over time you reflect on them mm -hmm. it reminds you it's like a pointer to point you to the right direction and you feel for example if you say you wanted to achieve your driving license or get a certification before the end of the year and and you're already in november and you've not done any certification in that year you can decide that, oh wow i really needed to achieve this let yes. me go online to browse some courses i would oh, enroll in. yes so i like it keeps you accountable how do people lose their identity because it's a term that seems broad you might be losing your identity or your sense of individuality in marriage without even realizing mm -hmm. because i've realized that over time some of my childhood friends or some friends we attended some primary schools together after i meet them five years down the line ten years down the line i will look at them and feel like that so this person like i was expecting more from them so i'll be wondering what happened to you if they were my very close friend i would ask what happened to their dreams what happened to their goals what are the things to look out for that would remind you that you're drifting away from your goals and aspirations are there things to look out for are there things you can how will i know because sometimes i might be drifting i wouldn't know <laughs> yes it's very very possible that's why i mentioned earlier i spoke to one of my big sisters she was also my boss in the financial institution where you are i'm sure Sinto knows her <laughs> yeah so i spoke to other i just mentioned something that oh i don't think i want to do this anymore i want to do that anymore she then spoke to me that yes it's fine if your partner achieves a lot in a marriage yeah but it's also the best thing if you also achieve something while your partner is achieving something for himself speaking to people is very key so you're speaking to people that are experienced in either marriage or experience experienced in life or even older than you the first thing i do is i, I speak to people a lot yeah like oh, mentors this is what, yeah, yeah mentors having a mentor it, it doesn't necessarily even have to be a professional mentor yes. it can be your friend that has been married for years it can be your sister it can be your brother just have like a mentor that you look up so it can even be your parents your mom yeah my mom is a mentor okay so my mom got a certificate at I think 40. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. So I look up to people like that. I have friends that they are older than me, say 35, 36, 37, mm. and they're still achieving things for themselves. Yeah. So I speak to them, ah, you're married, you have three kids, you have four kids, and you're still achieving things, you're still going to university, you're still getting your masters. How are you doing it? You know? Mm. So speaking to people, having mentors is one thing that is very important while being married because even as a married person you don't have all the experience trust me yeah you do not have all the experience and yeah you don't necessarily have to speak to them about the personal personal things in your marriage yeah but then talking to them seeing someone achieving striking goals you see ladies of women of 40 45 Mm. getting phd how are they doing it you see someone that used to be a banker and then after like maybe when they're even 40 years old and they're already been um, a nurse so i met a nurse at the i went to the hospital and i met a nurse and then she told me that she wasn't a nurse when she came to the uk wow. and then she's a nurse now she said she went to university at 38 really yes at 38 and your nursing degree she has to start from the first year and she will do like three years yes Wow. at 38 and she said right now she's about 45 and said she wants to study medicine really as in that <laughs> blew my head i'm like for this woman and she has grown-up kids mm. so for this grown-up woman to still be on track with her goal so who am i how would i mind oh, that, that i won't me yeah 
that reminds me sorry to interrupt it was a mental hospital i was working there and there was this student nurse we got talking and she was a student nurse she has completed her degree but she was just doing an so internship thing. yeah but she told me she was like 48 mm. and i was like really she didn't look her age though but we got talking and she told me i'm 48 and she was a student nurse she has completed her degree she has grown up children and i admire her so when we got talking it encouraged me to pursue my professional career because sometimes you might get so comfortable at where you are and mm. you feel like that's the end of the world yeah you see people achieving things yes yeah especially when you have a family i've got my best <laughs> oh i i have a job but then you just need to keep looking back at you know people and look up to people and also always like you mentioned earlier reflecting so i reflect a lot i just i can just be on my seat and i'm like oh so is this the best thing i can achieve is this my best mm. you know so immediately i just pick myself up and you know try some things it can even be as little as just new cooking recipes i've actually never uh, made for fun before but i made for fun last week wow, that's yes. <laughs> and that was my first time of making for fun and guess what i had a friend like a um, couple of friends tasted it they really liked it and i had to make for a birthday wow. so, yeah so i and made that's something you can even look into cooking yeah wow learning new skills it can be just cooking it can be baking you know um selling things online mm. you know just even getting a youtube channel really yes, that's yeah because i realized that do you know this youtube channel five years ago while i was still in nigeria i mm -hmm. created this channel okay this, channel, this particular channel and i posted one vlog <laughs> <laughs> it goes down, down to the first thing that i posted just oh it's still vlog. there it's still there of us making gary or something like that <laughs> And my goal and desire then was to start to become a content creator. And all of a sudden, things just got in the way and I lost the motivation. Yes. I stopped it. So imagine if I had continued to grow this channel five years ago. Imagine where I would have been at this stage. Probably I would have improved on my content creating skills, on my mm -hmm. um, editing skills. But it's never late. It's better late than never. Yes. If, if there's any skill you've always wanted to do, if there's any hobbies, probably you wanted to start like a fashion um, house, making dresses. Like I make dresses and I'm something I would still go back to. Mm -hmm. Just pick it up. If, it's, if you're good in cooking you can consider making food for birthdays or anniversary parties if you know how to bake cake you can bake cake if you know how to you can even cook and supply to people's offices for lunch you can think of any hobbies you can now the digital world has made it easier to learn new hobbies if mm -hmm. you want to learn a new language you can go online to learn if you want yeah. to learn anything you want to learn you can go online to learn it for free if it's content creating you can still do that so it's always good because sometimes after marriage we get so attached to our, our partner that we lost the our sense of things we can also achieve and it's always better like you said earlier if people achieve things together if you're achieving things and your partner or husband is also achieving things you pull your resources together you achieve more as a family rather than mm -hmm. you being a one income producing household <laughs> that's it's terrible <laughs> it's only not in this uk bro no. don't try it <laughs> Thank you so much. I truly appreciate this conversation. Yeah. Really nice. And yeah. one of my th key takeaways is keeping a journal, which mm -hmm. is something I will look forward to keeping. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having any me. Any other thing you want to say to us? Well, of encouragement. Anything else? Yeah, words of encouragement. Just you know, just try and um continue to be yourself. Try and yeah, keep a journal and also. Um, get a supportive partner. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Bye. Bye.